We have just about three minutes to go until the closing bell. We want to bring in our panel here to help us break down the action that we're seeing today, also what we've seen over the last couple of trading days. For that, we have Jim Schmigel. He is Chief Investment Officer at SCI. We're also joined by Shannon Siri, Wells Fargo economist. Jim, first to you, another day of selling. We have certainly have seen the markets come under pressure in the month of September. What's your reading on some of the selling action that we've seen? Well, I think we saw the sentiment numbers earlier today, which probably speaks a lot to that, a lot of concerns uh, really building up, whether it's Delta, maybe whether it's debt ceiling. We do have a Fed next week. Um, a lot of mixed signals coming out, I think, in several different places. Uh, interestingly, flows into the market seem to be buoyed and actually are, are fairly strong and robust. So some mixed messages coming in there for what investors are thinking versus what they're doing, kind of voting with their uh, with their dollars. And Jen, and speaking of mixed messaging, I, the, the economic data recently has been mixed. We got the consumer sentiment number out this morning. That, of course, disappointed a bit. In terms of what this means for the recovery, how are you looking at this number? Right, so I think the, the consumer picture has been incredibly mixed lately, right? So we got that better than expected retail sales report earlier this week. Um, we, we did caution that that was mostly good spending and was a nominal dollar. So it didn't give us a clear read for overall consumer spending as some of this high frequency data is really pointing to a plateauing in, in some of these in-person activities. And I think we really did see that in the confidence print this morning, right? So confidence remains bogged down at near a decade low uh, measured by that University of Sediment measure. And I think we're really um, due for this kind of slow patch here in, in consumer spending in the near term. But consumers remain financially in a good, in, in pretty good shape. So we're pretty confident that consumer spending will pick up again later um, this year and perhaps into early next year. All right. Well, let's take a look at where we are because we have under a minute to go here until the close. We're looking at losses across the board for the day and also for the week. The Dow off 131 points. So seeing some buying here uh, into the close. We're well off the lows of the day. The S&P off just around eight tenths of a percent as well as the Nasdaq. In terms of the sector action today, materials, communication services and technology are the worst performers. We mentioned that weaker than expected consumer sentiment number. That, of course, is keeping things in check today. And then options expiration, adding a little bit more volatility in these final few seconds of trading. There we go. Wrapping up the trading week. Again, losses for the day and also losses for the week. Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ all moving to the downside today. Investors a little bit worried about the rise that we've seen in COVID cases. Also, the mixed economic data that we've gotten out this week. And you can see the Dow closing off the lows of the day, off just around 168 points. We want to bring back in Shannon and Jim to help us break down exactly where we go from here. And Jim, when you're advising clients right now, I think there's lots of confusion about whether people should still be in a risk on strategy or if it's time to take some of that risk off the table. Where are you seeing opportunity? I think we're still in a risk on position for sure. Uh, we do like uh, the value sectors of the of the economy, value sectors within equity, even value around the world, um, which would mean more into emerging markets, more into non-U.S. securities. Uh, and then finally, commodities. So we're, we're kind of playing the reflation trade. Uh, that's taken a little bit of a breather in the, in the second and the third quarter. Uh, but we remain confident that that is the play and the, and the best place for uh, investors to put some of their risk assets uh, going into the end of the year. Jen, the big event next week is going to be the Fed meeting. Is certainly a lot riding on it. We're not expecting anything too substantial to come out of that meeting. But what do you think the message should be or needs to be from the Fed? Right, so we're, we're also not expecting, uh, you know, an announcement of tapering or anything at next week's meeting. Um, I think the message from the Fed will be that they're continuing to monitor the data as it comes in. So I think they'll be paying very close attention to the September jobs report, which obviously comes after next week's meeting. And I think that will really set the tone for the timing of tapering, right? So are, are they going to officially announce tapering at that November or perhaps that December meeting and kick it off maybe later this year or the start of next year? Jen, and you mentioned the jobs picture there. Certainly that has been one area that's been slightly weaker than the rest 
of the economy when it comes to this recovery. Lots of talk about whether or not the expiration of enhanced unemployment benefits, also people, kids heading back to school, whether how significantly that is going to boost the jobs numbers. How do you see that impacting the number over the next couple of months? Right, so I think you highlight two specific uh, reasons we think that the jobs recovery is going to gain a little bit of speed here. So that expiration of benefits should pull more workers back into labor force, particularly since we've seen wages rise across a number of industries. And the fact that children are returning to school, that, that you know, it takes off some of the burden from working parents, allowing them to return to the workforce. Um, I think how the Fed is looking at it, though, is yes, we got that disappointing report in terms of the August jobs number, but they're really looking at it from a cumulative perspective, right? So how much progress has been made. Um, and I think, you know, depending on how strong that September report is, you know, is it a couple of thousand again, or is it closer to that 500 to million jobs added range that will really set the tone in terms of their tapering process. And Jim, when it comes to the Delta variant, we certainly have seen the number of cases continue to rise, although some of the uh, skyrocketing numbers have pulled back just a little bit. In terms of how the market is reading this, how big of a concern do you see Delta at least being to stocks over the coming weeks? I think it's hard to discount it. I mean, we've seen it uh, in the con in the uh, consumer sentiment uh, numbers. No doubt, Delta plays a big part of that. Uh, you know, the new the news cycle all the time is is relatively uh, varied, but there's but there's big drops today. We had the FDA panel come out and reject the boosters, which were hanging, I think, over investors' heads. Uh, you are you are right, though. Those early states that saw this third wave spike have clearly peaked and are heading down. Uh, there is a lot of positive news out there. If we do want to focus and separate cases from hospitalizations and deaths, uh, there's, there is good news in there. And there's even you know, some, some of the experts in the field that have been with us through the entirety of this process, like Scott Gottlieb, who is really uh, looking favorable into the fourth quarter, that, that the peak of Delta is behind us. Uh, and it's, it's going to be an influence on the markets for sure. We've seen it already. Uh, but uh, dare we say, I think that influence itself may have peaked in terms of investor concerns around Delta. Jim Schmingel, great to speak with you, Chief Investment Officer with SEI, and also our thanks to Shannon Siri, Wells Fargo economist. Thanks to you both for joining us.